This is a piece of 16 ounce copper or about 25 gauge or 0.0216 thousandths. I'm going to heat this copper up until it is red hot. I'm heating the pewter up. Kind of going back and forth between the copper and the pewter so that they're both up to temperature. See the copper getting red hot there? Okay, I'm just pouring the pewter right onto the copper and now the pewter is bonded to the copper. And this is a piece of bronze, sheet bronze. Bronze is primarily copper with some tin added. Doing the same thing here. Bronze is going to act just a little bit differently than the copper. Getting the bronze good and hot. I'm going back to the pewter. Pouring it on. Wow, that went everywhere. Most of that remained on the bronze and is bonded to the bronze. One problem with this technique is the lack of control. So if I wanted to control the flow, it would take some practice. Here are a couple leftover ornaments from the ornament videos can see by adding the pewter on top of the copper it adds depth and dimension just makes them more interesting with these two pieces I did have a little bit more control so it shows me that with practice I could get it this is a small green stone that I sometimes find in my creek so when I see one I pick it up Never had a use for it, but think I can do something with it with the pewter. Getting the pewter so that it's molten. And pouring it out. And then dropping that stone right into the molten pewter. And as it cools, the pewter is forming right around that small stone. Now actually I would have preferred if I could have got that a little bit more in the center. Not centered, just a little closer to the center. But this has got to be done quick. Just not much time between the time that the pewter is molten and I can drop that stone in. Close up. And incidentally, when I'm doing the experimentation like this, I'm not skimming off the dross or the impurities. If my goal was to have a finished piece, I would definitely skim off the dross. This is what I call a splatter technique. Pewter and the ladle is molten, holding the ladle up about 12 inches above the steel welding table. And just splattering on the table. It is kind of fun to see what kind of designs one can come up with. Maybe it's a Rorschach test. It cools very rapidly once it hits the cold steel welding table. Now I have no idea what someone would use this for, but there are a lot of creative people out there, and I'm sure someone will find a creative use for it. In this particular piece, I did go around and smooth up the edges with the torch. The little texturing on top actually Put a little hole in it. 
And you can see how thin this is. So just an interesting technique to play with.